to what happened down in Tucson. This could be a new rivalry in the Pac-12. Not as good as the one we're going to see coming up, though, with Gonzaga and St. Mary's. That's become a really big rivalry out west in the West Coast Conference. It really seems to come down between those two teams. How do you see this playing out tonight? Well, to be a rival, you need both teams, obviously, to win some of these games. And St. Mary's has done that where they were able to beat uh, Gonzaga in last season's WCC Tournament Final in overtime. For St. Mary's to win this game, they've got to rattle the Zags. And talking to Mark Few earlier this evening, he knows it's a cracker box gym at McKeon Pavilion. Mm -hmm. They've had issues there before. They've got the big men like Olenek to dominate inside or at least be much more of a factor. Their guard play has to obviously watch those ball screens, is what he told me. Keep Matthew Delvadova out of the lane as much as possible. Not an easy task. All right, just a few seconds here. It is Delvadova and the Gales. Do they need to win tonight in order to get an at-large berth into the NCAA tournament, either tonight or maybe get some other big win for the rest of the year? Well, they've got this home game, and they've got Creighton at home. I think they've got to at least get one of those two, mm -hmm. because if they play Gonzaga, it's going to be for the WCC tournament title if they play them a third time. All right, Dave Fleming, Fran Fraschilla with the call at the kennel. The Gales and the Zags, West Coast Conference rivalry renewed right here on ESPN2. Enjoy the game. We'll see you at the half. You're watching ESPN's Rivalry Week, presented by Wendy's. Roses are red, violets are blue. Here's a Valentine's Day gift for hoops fans like you. The Bulldogs of Gonzaga are leading the way and don't have a loss during West Coast Conference play. But the St. Mary's Gales have the Zags in their sights and are led by an Aussie who scores left and right. So if it's passion, emotion, and no love lost you seek, you're in the right place because it's rivalry week. Now gather your loved ones, family, and friends. It's a Thursday night showcase on ESPN. Thursday night showcase presented by T. Rowe Price, part of Rivalry Week, presented by Wendy's. Tonight, a matchup of the top two teams of the West Coast Conference, number five Gonzaga on the road to take on the St. Mary's Gales. Here are the standings of the WCC, as has been the case for the last many years. These are the top two Zags undefeated in West Coast Conference play. St. Mary's right behind them at 10 and 1. And hi everyone, Dave Fleming alongside Fran Priscilla here at McEwen Pavilion. The Zags are about to be introduced, so you hear the booze. I got the tie loose already. It's about 90 degrees in here. The students are on top of us. It's loud. It's rocking. This is a great rivalry. You know, I started the week in Lawrence, Kansas at Allen Fieldhouse, but I couldn't wait, Dave, to get to McEwen Pavilion because I know what's at stake in the West Coast Conference. This is going to be fun. Yeah, this is the game of the year in league play. This may well decide the conference championship. We see great stars on the court here tonight, including a player, Fran, you know very well, a guy whose game you're a fan of, Matthew Delavadova, the point guard for St. Mary's, may be the best in the country at running the pick and roll, and that particular play, Fran, will be a huge part of this game. Well, it's 80% of St. Mary's offense. Let me explain to you, when I, when I talk pick and roll, there's three levels of point guards in pick and roll. At level one, it's the guy that's only concerned with his own man and the pressure that's put on him. That is an average pick and roll guy. Not going to get a lot done. The good pick and roll player is the guy that's not worried about his man, but he's worried about the screener's man. That's a little bit better. But the great ones are the level three pick and roll guys. The Nashes, the Chris Pauls. They're not worried about their man or the screener's man. They're going to pick out of those other three defenders, the open man. That's what Matthew Delvadova does best. So it's going to be a huge part of the challenge of the game for the Gonzaga Bulldogs. How do you slow down that pick and roll play? How do you stop Delvadova? Here's the Zags starting lineup. Fifth ranked team of the country, 23 and 2 overall. Pangos and Bell in the backcourt. Mike Hart, sort of a hustle player, blue guy. Elias Harrison, Kelly Olenigdalo, both having huge years for an excellent Gonzaga team. On the other side of things, St. Mary's 21 and 4 overall, 10 and 1. That one loss, a very close game up in Spokane. Again, earlier this year, Delavadova and a hold in a backcourt along with Jordan Page and then Mitchell Young and Brad Waldo have been a nice combination down low for the Gales of St. Mary's. There is the senior Matthew Delavadova 
who is truly one of the best point guards in all of college basketball. And it's not just the pick and roll that he does well. No, he's a great team leader. I've been watching him since 2009 when he represented Australia in the under-19 World Championships in New Zealand. As he gets introduced now in front of this raucous crowd in Moraga, Bella Vadova's been through a lot of these battles. These two teams, if you include tonight's game, they have met 14 times in the last five years. So that means basically the two regular season games every year they've met in the championship game of the West Coast Conference Tournament could well be that they'll meet there again this season. Well, you know this. Randy Bennett lost 19 of the first 22 games as he built St. Mary's. Gonzaga has been the standard in this conference and particularly for St. Mary's and Randy Bennett has used the Zag success to build this program now for a long time in the WCC Gonzaga didn't have a rival that could really had rivals the games were spirited but who could really challenge Gonzaga at the top of this league that has changed with the emergence of this St. Mary's program the teams have split the last eight meetings both of these teams have combined to win every regular season title since 2000. The all-time series record heavily in favor of the Zags. But lately, these games have been close. They've been high scoring. They have been spirited. And the head coach of the Zags is 14th year. Very few better in the business than Mark Few. Right now, the winningest active coach in college basketball. Number one, Roy Williams, number two. Brad Stevens, number three. Remarkable consistency for Gonzaga basketball and maybe maybe the best team he's had in Spokane there's some people who are starting to believe that as the Zags have rolled along great non-conference schedule for Gonzaga again and there is Randy Bennett the guy Fran was just talking about who totally rebuilt this St. Mary's program into a power in the WCC and you can see the Randy's a little fired up for the start of this game two wins in the year before he got here nine his first year been an upward trajectory ever since. So here we go, Kelly Olinick, who is playing at a very high level. And Brad Waldo will jump center underway from historic McEwen Pavilion. And Gonzaga has the first possession of the game. Now, last time Matthew Del Vadova played center field off Mike Hart. He's going to roam, try to help where he can. And he's matched up with Hart here, who is not much of a score, does a lot of things well for the Zag. Olenek to the basket, rejected by Brad Waldo. Della Vadova will wait for his teammates. There was a pile underneath the basket after that last play. So this is what Gonzaga did up at uh, Spokane. They double teamed hard on Della Vadova. Young was open as the defense was rotating around. That's the first bucket of the game. Part of the reason they rotated was because Della, De Della Vadova stretched them side to side. It'll be interesting to see the way that these two coaches play off of that first matchup that was so spirited earlier this year. Here's Gary Bell Jr. Olenek will shoot from the outside, and he will make. That's a long two. Foot was on the line. Isn't that amazing? Kelly Olenek's not going to make a lot out there, but fairly accurate anyway. Two for eight, now three for nine. First minute plus from Moraga. Top two teams in the West Coast Conference. Maybe the top rivalry these days out west in college basketball, these two. Some of that screen and roll action. Bella Vadova found Mitchell Young, who had the ball knocked out of bounds. It'll stay St. Mary's ball. What Gonzaga is doing right now is they're trapping the screen and roll. Think of it as a quarterback in football who's getting blitzed and has got to make the hot read and the dump off. They did this up in Spokane relatively effectively. Six on the shot clock. Waldo has to realize it, and I'm not sure he does. Page is going to have to shoot near midcourt and just heaves it up there. That'll be out of bounds. Now that was a waste of possession. I was a little surprised Della Vadova didn't come back for that ball after he inbounded it. Randy Bennett was upset with Michael Reed. The official was sort of in the way there, but that wasn't entirely what went wrong for the Gales that time. Kevin Pangos, outstanding sophomore point guard in his own right, feeds Olenek. Up and under move for Kelly Olenek, who's got the first two buckets for the Zags. There's no question, Gonzaga is going to try to go inside on Waldo and Young. This is not a deep front line, and that's a strength of Gonzaga's. 
That's an offensive foul. That's the reason Mike Hart starts for this team. A terrific defender. Watch him get... That's close, but I like the fact that he... Tries to pick up a cheap one early. Even if that was a foul on Hart, just to take the chance to try to get one on Delvadova early is a good play. A very smart player and a leader for this Gonzaga team. Here's Pangos, who's really been shooting the ball well. A little runner, no good. Olenek there to finish. How about Kelly Olenek? What a season he's had, Dave. We watched him in November and December, and he has not let up at all. He has come to play here tonight. He commits a foul, though. Helping on that screen and roll play. Well, you see Olenek now. Pangos will shoot the little floater. Gets in that high paint area. No one checks Olenek out. He gets right to the rim. Came in shooting 65% from the field. And look at the numbers from the first meeting between these two. He will come out. That was his first personal foul. But he comes out of the game at least momentarily. A 31-point performance. And it was a monster performance in January against the Gales. You know what I like about Mark Few getting a winnick out right now? This this game is so supercharged. The officials are going to call it close the first three or four minutes. So why worry about picking up a second one when you have that depth with Dower and Karnowski? Well, I think it's a good point. A part of the challenge of this game is just getting through these first few minutes. What a nice move by Della Vadova. Dower steps out. Della Vadova split it.